I'm a child, citizen, husband, and father. First, I want you to come into a classroom with me. I was in this classroom as a much younger version of myself. I was a community police officer, a Garda, in this area at the time. I love going in, doing my community policing duty with the kids because they would tell you so much about yourself. They're so honest, those souls. They could tell you an awful lot more about what mum and daddy are doing at home too, you know, but we'll tell that story another time. But one particular classroom never left me. As I said, it was before my oldest boy was born. And I went in, same as any other classroom, got on the floor with the kids. You either sat on the children's chair or you knelt down at the table with them and played. You taught, you listened. And this classroom had something different. Had a child, his name was David. David was different. He was special needs, he was in a wheelchair, but he brought such beauty to that classroom and spoke with the principal and teacher and watched the kids playing in the schoolyard afterwards. I was really, really impressed that day with the equality, with what was happening in that school because every child was giving. These children just were givers. And I went on, did my round of schools. I probably had between six and ten schools to visit for a week, every term. Came back to that school at the next term and something was missing. David wasn't in the class. I said, Pat, where, where's, where's David? Andrew, I, I didn't have the heart to tell you but um, he passed away since you were last here. I said, Pat, I'd love to have got a phone call. As I said, Andrew, I just didn't have the heart to tell you, but I want to give you this. And Pat gave me this absolutely beautiful essay written by David, all about how he was going to respond in Alpha 1-2, the police patrol car, he was going to go to the calls. He was going to catch all the baddies. And he was going to do all his patrolling. And he was going to go and visit the schools and the old people. And he was going to do his duty. And Pat said, I want to tell you something else. That letter, Andrew, was written that David wrote was read out at his funeral. And that was a deeply unsettling moment for me, a very humbling moment for me. His parents chose to read that out at his funeral mass. And that taught me something. Humility, which is part of my personality, it taught me about service and duty. I've told that story in many police classrooms in Ireland and abroad. And it taught me to always remember where democracy begins and ends. Democracy extends into every child's classroom, every time you go and talk, every time you listen to a child. I put on my uniform every day of my life, hoping to honour David because he comes on duty with me every single day. There's not one day I've ever put on my uniform without remembering that day in a classroom. 15 minutes of a simple public servant's time and hundreds of people heard David's beautiful words. Now, I want you to move with me to another room. This time, I want you to come into my home. I want you to come into the kitchen of my house. My deaf son, Callum, that's his sign name, 
Callum is baking a cake. And he's asking everyone in the family to come into the kitchen. Come on, come on, come on. I want you all to come in. Everyone's to sit around the table now. And we're all going to tell stories. I, I feel like we're the knights of the round table. Callum tells the first story. It's about the pirate queen, Grania Whale, from Mayo. I can feel the waves washing. Next, his twin brother, Donica, tells us how proud he, he was last week when Ireland won the match with the All Blacks. Barry, his oldest brother, tells us about his hurling match that weekend. And Matthew tells us how he bought a new computer game. And the hero of the story, my wife, Helen, the queen in the family, tells us how she grew up on a farm in North Cork. Because sign language is the first language. Irish sign language is the first language of our home. Because we're equal around the table. Why, you ask? Because I learned a long time ago how important equality is in my life and feelings. I want my son to feel he's wanted and loved every second of every day. Why is this so important? Because that's how a family should be. It's the first step to how a country lives and is. Next, I want you to come to another classroom. This is Callum's school classroom. Sorry, folks, there's not equality there because his language is not respected there. Despite the fact we have a beautiful document called the Constitution, we have a brilliant Sign Language Act which I worked immensely on and supported the Irish deaf community with in a small way. But still, he's not taught through his first and primary language, Irish Sign Language. And I found that out probably because someone's looking down. There's a spirit, a soul somewhere is helping my son. His great-great-grandfather, Cornelius Geary, was also deaf. We found that out recently. And Callum was over the moon when he found out that he had a deaf ancestor. And only I discovered six years ago a book by a deaf education expert. I'd have never known how poor his education was. And I've been to the UNCRC, I've been to our legislature dozens and dozens and dozens of times, and I must say I believe in our democracy. We've got some brilliant legislators, trust me. There are brilliant people in this country working for you in the Dáil and Shannon. There are some brilliant, the pause buttons are elsewhere, ladies and gentlemen. There are brilliant people there. But why am I doing this? I'm doing it for the stories he is yet to write. For the poetry he is yet to recite. And I'm doing it because of the language of light. I am no leader. I'm a servant. I'm a servant to my country. I try and bring honour to my uniform every day I put it on. I'm a servant to democracy. I dedicate myself every day, 
every second of my life to democracy. It is a gift, and you need to work on that gift. We need to, every single day of your life, give yourself to democracy. It's hard work, but someone must answer that call. And I'm happy to sacrifice myself for my country and for my son. If that is pain, exhaustion, suffering, I'm happy to take that. Because my son deserves an education. Every other language in the state, you must have a university degree in that language to teach in that language, except for Irish Sign Language. Why is that? I'm not sure why. I ask again, why? Just because my son is different, does that make him any less worthy of love or education? Just because his language is different, does that define his potential, his ability, his hopes, his dreams? It seems like our country has made that decision for him. It's, it's my twin boy's birthday today. They're 13 years old. Donica, his twin, can dream to be anything he wants. Callum has had his dreams capped because our state, this beautiful country, and I often stand on our seashores. I love our seashores and watch that Atlantic Sea. And you, like me, you can feel those millions of people that were washed on that sea. I don't want my son to be one of those people washed on that sea, to go to America, to go to England, to feel where his hopes and dreams may be realised. Why is that? Just because he's deaf, an accident of birth, as John Hume would say. Big question. For me, for you. What is freedom of speech without a language? If his own country does not recognize his freedom of speech through his own language, where is his freedom? Why is his need for education so low on the list of priorities in our state? I love my country with my heart, with my soul, my spirit, with my being. Ireland, it's time for you to love my son. Thank you.